What up, what up? It's your boy Project Logic. This is clever. We are back. We are back. About time. <laughs> Did y'all hear how you said his name? This is clever. This is clever. <laughs> <laughs> you like you on the dating app, man. We man. got we got Hank and June in the building, man. Episode number three of the Clever Logic Podcast, man. Been gone for a minute, Clever. Where you been at, man? Man, working, staying out of the way, man. Working on this credit, you know. Trying, trying to flourish in twenty twenty two, man. So I new year, that, you know. How you been? Those been going on. I'm good, man. Is this our, is this our first pod of the year? It is. No, we've been gone a minute. We've been gone a minute. We've been gone a minute. I've been good, man. You know, working, music, you know what I'm saying? Outside ventures, a lot of that, man. Hey, since this is our first pod back and we late and everybody got theirs out the way, did you make a New Year's resolution? Man, um, no, to be honest with you, not, not that. I, I use it because I, I usually don't ever stick to them. He's going to oh, continue wow. to fail. <laughs> <laughs> continue to keep fucking up like he been doing hey man it's been working for me that's what's up man yeah man so we, we you know what i'm saying we've been going for a minute man chilling handling business getting things right with the setup getting the business right man we back though man happy to be back this whole time we've been off though keep bro clev ain't stopped talking shit Man, listen. Like he hasn't stopped talking shit. <laughs> to know me, like, to know at, me is to love at me, all, man. man. You know what I'm saying? So, so you know what I'm saying. We are gonna start off the uh, the year. Uh, hold on, hold on, June. What up, man? What up, June? What up, what June? Up, what up, Give a round of applause for June, round man. Round of applause for June, man. man. What's going on, man? Mister, quit a job. Yeah, uh, <laughs> quit a oh, job. Y'all can quit. have this I'm motherfucking to, I'm badge. To, <laughs> I'm about to quit again, y'all. Hey, let me tell you. Let me tell you real quick, man. How mad I am at June, dog. Oh, oh shit. Listen, I have never in my life, never in my fucking, I'm still mad to this day. It may seem petty this, to y'all. This build up is but, phenomenal. But because <laughs> it's so you. petty, I got to build it up. It's so petty, but I can still taste it. Oh wow! <laughs> oh. <laughs> June gave me some of the nastiest pizza I've ever had in my life, and maybe it's gonna show how ratchet I am, man. Look, man. I ain't hear this story. What happened? Oh, okay. we just had a little, we just had a little, a ch- little chick. A little chill session, you know what I'm right, saying? Right, we right, to kick right. it outside on the I, pot. I did not make the pizza. I bought it. So, but like, it's your fault though. Like I like this. It, it's a, it, it, it was, was, it was, was at Pizza Popular, so it's kind of nice spot. So you shout expect okay, populace. shout out Pizza Popular. You know, sit down. Okay, okay, okay. Going. Logic did not like the shrimp and crab pizza. First of all, that's pause, good. man. That shit is awful. The problem bro, is logic, we, bro. We, it's we. awful. <laughs> like first of all, shrimp and crab on pizza. I don't know why when I heard seafood pizza, I don't know what I thought was gonna be on there. Like in my mind, I saw an episode of SpongeBob. I'm like, okay, this is about to be lit. In my mouth. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right. See, that's where you, you put too much thought into it. Man, he got the pizza from the chum bucket, dog. Like, this shit was disrespectful. Like, but it's man, like. Don't sleep on plankton. Man, there's a lot of good taste and flavors, right? But then a lot of times they don't mix. And to me, like, pizza sauce and imitation crab meat. Shout out to Pizza Pop. Man, shout out to Pizza Pop. Man, man, listen, to be listen, fair, man, I got you, the- you just lose respect for some of your friends when they recommend <laughs> some stuff like that, bro. I'm like, bro, like, you really gonna let me? And like, y'all see me, I'm a big fella. Like, I don't turn down too much food, bro. Like, I literally could not eat a. Eat, I, fin- I bit one piece. I'm like, my bad, John. I'm about to waste this piece of dog. Nah, I can't he do literally this, man. did the. Uh, uh, <laughs> when when uh, Squid Hank likes the pizza. <laughs> When Squidward, but hang short. Took, when Squidward took the bite out the Krabby Patty, he took it. <laughs> Clev liked the pizza, but Clev black. Oh, well, shit. But you black like this. <laughs> you remember the comedian? The pizza was fire. Yeah, but that was I terrible. fucked with it. I, I ain't fucked fuck with it. Hey, we, we, we got we to gotta go out again, man. Yeah, we definitely got to get out more, you, man. You, hang you out picked more, the place. Man. All right, I can do that. <laughs> I can do that. We can go right up. We can go right down the street where we, we do jalapenos. We can do jalapenos. Jalapenos and the yaks. Bro, we can do I, I never heard of it. I never, it's a, a, never heard it's, it's a local I was, um, I lived there Mexican restaurant. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. okay. So they sure. on point though. They on point. Um, but yeah, yeah. Shout out to Pizza Populous. I like the people. I like the restaurant. Maybe I'm ratchet. Tell me. But seafood pizza is not what it is, bro. 
Least no, no, you, you ain't you ain't ratchet. June June is just on a, on a way higher tax bracket than we are. Like that nigga, that nigga no, fancy. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am no longer. Employed. June quit jobs on the first day. You the no longer. Bad, po- I've had my third job. Listen, since the January, bad, since December. Listen, listen y'all gotta, can't y'all don't y'all can't see him on cam, but he is dripped up. Like I see the roll. <laughs> don't hide the roll. He trying to hide the rolly. <laughs> we see it. The bad is is here. The bag done dropped. Shout out to the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Tax Day. Happy Chrysler Profit Sharing Day, No, we ain't done day, taxes man. yet, but that's coming. No, I'm just talking now. Everybody got their taxes, them, them Chrysler All my Profit friends at Chrysler, I will check. be by. Listen. I, Gas tank I, on I, E, all drinks on you, I man. I am is cousin. Yeah. Cousin. Shout out to the Chrysler workers. We, <laughs> all the King Crab there. legs about to be gone from the grocery man. store, bro. <laughs> all the bundles. Come come to uh, a different uh, kind of different clothing. Get your clothing gear, Chrysler workers. You got that? For sure. Yeah, come shop listen. with Hank. Come shop, We got man. them, uh, we got we got them tax need. specials going on that kind of different. You buy one shirt at full price, you get a second shirt at full price. Come on now, <laughs> spend your money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> go. You got it. You know what I'm saying? You and got we it. will Let's give go. you a carryout bag for your there stuff. You Receipts are free. free. Receipts and that is free. just us putting your shit in the car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, but man, come on, Claire. Let's get to the shits, man. man come on, man. Shits. Let's go. So look, right. So this is our. This is kind of even how... The idea came about for to do the Clever Logic project uh, podcast, right? Like, in all seriousness, all honesty, you know, because I talk my shit. I, I respect Clev's opinion on music. I respect his ear for music, right? But we're a couple years apart in age, and it's like we can both respect a certain song. But then he'll just say some trash ass shit, <laughs> right? And I'll be like, I don't get it, I don't get it, right? So we would always talk. I'd always see even before I reached out to Claire. I think I told John we were talking about doing the doing the podcast. I think Claire would be dope because I'm for always sure. looking at his post for sure. And it's like ninety percent of the shit he say I think is bullshit in my opinion when it comes to music. <laughs> but but it's like it's bullshit from my perspective. I respect, but he's the, his opinion with his bullshit. Yeah, like he giving his opinion, oh, yeah. and it's like I could be in some case I could be the old nigga get off. My my lawn ass nigga I could be that you know what I'm saying I don't know there's a lot of those I don't think you're I I truly honestly don't think you're one of those uh uh-huh but you you definitely have your particulars especially when it comes to current age music do you think so I definitely think so see I think like if you go to this is how I look at it like and I, I realize this being in other big cities like when you go to New York or when you go to LA, or when you go to Atlanta, or when you go to Miami, it's a lot of city pride in those cities. Everybody proud of LA, who from LA. Everybody proud of Miami, who from Miami. And they proud of New York, who from New York. You know what I'm saying? They proud of Atlanta, they proud of those big cities. And then, but they look at the little cities like Pontiac, like, what, what, what are you proud of? Like, they looking at us like, do you have a sports team? Do you, do, do, what do you have? Do you have a national, like, what, what is the hype based on? And we like, bro, we proud of where we come from. And they like, but yeah, what's there? Like, what, what are y'all doing there? That's right. So it's like everybody, and that's all those Pontiac, you know, Flint, Inkster, any town that you go to, Buffalo, Poughkeepsie, the big cities is looking at you like, huh? So it's like you always going to be proud of where you come from. So it's like when we talk music, I kind of look at you almost like the little city. Like you be proud of the shit that's from your era because it represents you. But it's possible you could be from a trash era. <laughs> like people who from di- the disco era, let's keep it real. The disco era was trash, right? But trash. you got Donna Summers. Like you got some good music out of the disco era. So people, who, oh, back in my day, disco music, yeah, but Boogie I Nights mean, was trash. I mean, but to be fair, I I personally feel the same way about 80s rap. I feel like that was a trash era for me. But what, what are you basing trash off of? Because he, here's here's the here's what always throws me off when people say that. It's hard for me to call a pioneer trash. Because if you walking down a path where I already had to cut down the trees and you judging the quality of the trees I cut down, but you ain't cut down not one tree, how you gonna call me trash? You just walking through the path I laid. So public enemy, they was laying the path. NWA, Ice T was laying the path. Pro- Professor Griff was laying the path. These people were laying the path, and NBA young boy just walked his raggedy ass down it. Hey man, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like shout, shout out to so, top. So shout out to young boy, man. Don't shoot me. <laughs> Don't shoot me. Don't shoot me. Don't put a hit on me. I'm sorry. Man. But that's always my thing. So it's like it's hard, even though a lot of '80s rap I personally. 
don't listen to, but it's hard for me to say it's trash when they created a path I mean, I, and I, we just followed their blueprint. I have a level for, uh, of respect for it, but mm. it, it's just, it's hard. The way I look at it is like, yeah, they're pioneers, yeah. but it, it's very hard for me to listen to this and enjoy this when I know there's way better shit yeah. out there. Of course, of course, but but I'm just I'm just talking about and I and I stole this and shout out the ledge man, uh, what's I, what's the name of her ledge uh, show? Top, top, shout out to ledge from the shout, top, top tier to podcast. podcast. Make because sure subscribe, man. when ledge came on here, he, he put this in my brain and I stole this from ledge. Ledge was talking about when he um critiquing ballads, he never called him trash because it's like for one, trash is a word that evokes so much emotion. You call somebody trash, they like, man, what you mean? And then on top it of that, it really do. <laughs> and, yeah, and then there's always something that can be taken, you know, from even if you're a performer, hey, you had the heart to step up on stage, you took your time and put it together, you delivered it well. So he like, I just stay away from the word trash, and I kind of stole that from Ledge. You know what I'm saying? When I'm talking about the music or anybody in particular, I kind of don't go with the word trash. Yeah, ten minutes but, in, this nigga said trash four times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but I made it clear when, when he, I'm joking. But he tried to stay away from it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. You know what I'm saying? But it's like when I'm joking, I'll say it. But being realistic, I really don't try to call it trash, right? Right. But like it's creating something from scratch is a lot harder than following a recipe. Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's like I I know that that uh fucking you know Grandmaster Flash's lyricism doesn't hold a candle to NBA Young Boy. I understand that. You know what I'm saying? I understand it because now don't get me wrong, like. Why did you use NBA? Because I don't like it. that. That's kind of like the litmus test for us. Like I like new music, but I don't like NBA Young Boy. He likes NBA Young Boy. To me, like I've been that's trying. That's the my point heart. I was getting across. Right, I don't. Right, I don't. Right, right. But Pro- proceed. But I have nothing. Per- it's just the music. Like I don't know. No, only thing I know about NBA Young Boy is he stay in trouble and uh, Floyd so Mayweather's me, daughter's so, baby mama. That's so all I know. So about. let me ask you: Have you have you listened to an NBA Young Boy project? No. Okay. So he, here's where my issue comes in. Mm. If, if if I have any negative opinion on an era of music, a particular artist... No, no. Be careful what you pro- perpetrate. Somebody will demand that of you. I at least take the time to at least listen to an album. So that, that gives my opinion validity for me. But think about what you just said, though, right? And let's compare that to your earlier statement. Okay. You don't like 80s rap. How many 80s albums have you listened to fully? Fully about two or three albums but i've heard a lot of a lot of the music i've heard a lot of the music but the <laughs> right right he don't like 80s rap because he heard two albums right hit that button again <laughs> like <laughs> where come pro, pro you can't it? judge a whole 10 year period off two albums bro you said you don't like 80s rap because you've heard two albums from the 80s. I don't like a particular artist because I've okay. maybe heard five or seven songs from them and none of them I, did I, it. That's that. I, don't, I don't think you even heard that much. Yeah, I did. I go on YouTube all day. Like, I'll listen. I'll check them out. Like, I don't, like, with this, especially because I like Dirk. So, with this Dirk young boy thing, I don't have a dog in the race. Like, I'm, I'm not I don't either. I but don't it's either. just like, one of them make I good fuck, music. I with Dirk. But, like, it's like, I haven't heard a... I like young boy very I haven't heard a... I've, I've heard one... Young boy song that I like, and it was one that he got with the Migos. Um, that's hard. That's on that's hard. hard. But the Migos was going on that bitch. Right. Like, young boy verse didn't stand out, but, but he did his thing on there. But like, listen, I put June on the young boy. Why did you do that? <laughs> Watch the way you say that. Say the, <laughs> say the artist music. <laughs> Pause. I put him on the NBA Young Boys music. There we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Man, look. So, so look, right. So, but that, that's just kind of. I mean, there's a couple other artists that he real big on that I'm not, and I'm sure vice versa. Yeah. There's a couple artists that I'm real big on that he not. But at the end of the day, you can always disagree with somebody. You can always, but still respect. Like, okay, I can't respect where you're coming from, even though I, I don't see how you got like two plus two is four to me. But that's two what plus makes two this, is eight to him. I don't see how he got. That, that what makes this show wonderful. Yeah, it makes because we're. we're the moments to where we agree on something is going to be extremely rare. So if when we do this, if we both have something similar on this, I will be shocked. Yeah, so what are we doing? We putting our top ten list together, right? Our top ten hip hop albums. And let me let, let me ask: Are we doing top ten? Just are we calling it top ten hip hop albums, or are we calling it top ten hip hop albums of all time? 
top 10 hip hop album. Okay, cool. Because I'm pretty sure there's going to be some time that's going to be excluded and people going, why I had this, why I had that. So before we go into the list, let's kind of talk about from your perspective, Clev, how do you come up with a list of top 10 albums? Okay. Um, when I did it, I, I I took a more personal approach. So okay. my, my top ten is don't don't tell your list yet. Don't well, no, 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 okay. not okay. My top ten consists of albums that, um, personally and directly affected me and my childhood mm. growing up. So okay. like, the best way I could I could compare how I did my list, mm. um, Michael Vick is my favorite NFL player of all okay. time. I would never say he's the greatest NFL player of all time. Okay. So if we did like an actual, these are the greatest hip hop albums of all time, mm. a completely different list than my ten favorite. Okay. So that that that's kind of how like I did mine. Okay. Um. So to kind of get some context around what years, because you're saying albums that affected you when you were growing up. Yes. What years are we talking? Um. This is going to go as far back as 94 and all the way up to 2011. 94 to 2011. Correct. So 94, I think that's when Nas's It Was Written came out. 2011. What dropped in 2011? I'm trying to think of a, a music time span. Like, what did Ye drop in 2011? Did he drop? Oh, Clever knows this. <laughs> I'm trying to think. What, let me see. What did Ye drop in 2011? What did he drop in 2011? My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fan. <clears throat> okay, there Told we go. You. So we go. <laughs> so we're going. And I thought that's what it was. I wasn't sure. I didn't want him to correct me. I'm like, you're wrong, nigger. He tried, he tried to delay it. He tried to delay it. I tried to give him a he chance. He tried to hand no, I thought I it was. To, he tried to hide his fan. I tried right. to give him a chance. So we talking Nas's, Nas's It Was Written to Ye's Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Right? So that was pretty much your formative time on coming up in music, which is kind of similar to mine. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're not too far off in age, but it's just funny how not being that far off in age, you know, two, three years, four, five years can make a big difference in what you heard during oh, those yeah. times. Yeah. So um what are some things that makes an album a classic to you? Because you said your list is based on your opinion, so cool. So that means it ain't gotta fit my criteria, ain't gotta fit Hank or June, nobody else's criteria. What makes an album classic to Clev? Um, I'm really big on production. Okay. Um, it, it, it has to stand the test of time for a classic album, be a classic album. It has to have the same impact as it originally come out. If I can go back and listen to this album 20 years later mm -hmm. and I, I still get that same vibe, the same energy, mm -hmm. um, classic album. So does it, so, and I, I'm pretty sure you're not saying this, but I just want to clarify it. So how old does the ha album have to be? Before you consider it classic, because you say it has to stand the test of at time. At least, so. at least five years. So it has to be at least five years old to be a classic. And I, I think, fair. and I think, I think, I think that's that was Joe Budden's criteria when they was talking about class. I think you, he was talking. About, it has to be out for at least five years so we could talk about the album being classic. Okay. And I, I think that that's a that's a fair amount of time for, you know, what I'm saying an album to grow and develop and see. Uh, the amount of influence the project has bought afterwards. So I start say about I take about five. Years. That's fair. That's fair. That makes sense. So what do you think? The sidebar before we get to the list, I'm just I'm building suspense. <laughs> uh, so what do you think when you see people when albums drop, and it's like because for one, what do you think when the album drop and people saying two months later, three months later, it's a classic? Is there ever a scenario when you can think something dropped that's an instant classic? Or is that like oxymoronic? It can't be a classic. No, I don't. I don't think it can. Mm. I think. I think an album can be like great, like great. Perfect example when uh, Victory Lap came out. Mm. That was Harold an instant classic. Mm. I think, and it's been about like three, four years. So I, I think. Now we can start that conversation. Mm. But I mean, to be fair, is like after death, your aura, your music just goes just to the roof. Look what happened with Pop Smoke. Okay. Um, 
So for me, and I, I don't think I can, I, I, I can listen to an album and say, you know what, I, I think this is going to stand the test of time, but I'm okay. not going to automate, this is, a, no, not for me. Okay. Hey, June, what you think? Do you think it's possible, because it's one album, it's not a rap album, so I'll say it, but it's one album that comes to mind. To me, the mis- Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, when it dropped, the day it, I knew it was classic. Like, and I remember when it dropped in 99, I was in the 10th mm-hmm. grade when it came out and I first heard it. For sure. I was like, and that's when I was in my full No Limit Soldier bag. <laughs> and when that came, I took my soldier rag off so slow. Like, yeah. girl, you know you better <laughs> watch out. Oh, like, you know what I'm saying? It was just, it was just one of them ones that you knew. Don't. You was ever. in the moment. Don't ever do say, that. I don't say, I rap. I rap. Okay. okay. I rap. Don't, All right. don't do that no more. Man. <laughs> hey, when that Lauren dropped, though, yeah. that's a classic. Yeah, album. that's a classic. Album. So, but, for sure. It's but for thinking sure rap classic. though, and thinking in general, that 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 one album could be an outlier. In general, is it? Do you ever think it's fair for something to be called a classic? The year of the moment of, like, is there ever times when you realize, like, yo, I'm in one of them moments? There's been a couple albums mm-hmm. where I thought that. Like what? Both the Chronics. Mm. When I first heard both the Chronics, okay. I was mm-hmm. like, "This is amazing!" Yeah. Um, the Blueprint. Mm. Love that album. I didn't. That didn't take no time for me to say okay. classic. I mean, there's there's a couple of them that I was like, but like even even when I heard it for the first time, and to be fair, I was only like what nine when that came out. That came out what two thousand one. Blueprint of the year, but yeah, <laughs> September 11, 2001. September 11, 2001. So dropped the same day as the Twin Towers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I I can't think of an uh, now. That's not saying that's not saying that it won't ever happen to mm-hmm. for me mm-hmm. because all of these albums that's on my list, I never listened to it for the first time and just knew mm. it took time for me. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. I think to be fair, I think the word classic insinuates time it does a classic car is classic because it stood the test of time so i think at times an album can drop and we can be like oh yeah this is gonna be a classic right here right but you still don't know right until the time goes by it, it has to it has to but back then if you listen to something on repeat to me like if you didn't take it out mm. your deck if that Stayed in your CD player mm-hmm. and didn't move for a month. Yeah, and you didn't skip anything. Mm-hmm. You know, pretty much in your mind, you knew that was going to be that was going to stand the test of time. You weren't going to get tired. Mm-hmm. Of it. Also, for me, uh, a big criteria. Well, not a big criteria, but it helps if the album has little to no skips. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it can't. Yeah, like skips are. If you skipping, it ain't. Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, I agree. Like, with that. like my. My top three is like all the way through mm. for me. There's okay. only one skip on the blueprint. I can I I st- for do me. you consider an album a classic if it has one skippable song? Yeah, okay. yeah, I, I do too. I do too. Yeah. I just want to. I just want to. Yeah, it could be. It can have multiple. What, what's the skip. limit? What's the limit? It all. It, it, it depends it's, on it's how many ratio. songs. It's ratio. On there. Okay. It so let, okay. So let's say an album has twenty songs and it's five songs you skip. Is it a classic? Yeah, but the other fifteen are. The other, are, other, if the 15, other fifteen are, are fire. It, 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 it got to be all songs. It can't be skits. No, all songs. No, no so, skits. No interludes. If you got fifteen songs on there, that's bangers. But also, here's the thing too. Like, I also try to be fair with my skips, right? Because like some of my favorite artists, like they may. It's like, is the song bad, or is it just something that I didn't want to hear? You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of your favorite artists will try stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, for instance, let's use a, a complete album. Kanye West, um, 808s and Heartbreak. Like, I bought complete that album. album. That, I bought it the day it dropped, and then I listened to it, and then they never wanted to listen to it again for like three years. But but, but it was because, ooh. But no, no, hear me out, though. No, it's a fire <laughs> album. But in, in, in that moment, that's not what I want to hear. Yeah. I didn't want to hear RoboCop. Like, I didn't want to hear that. Like, what is this? It like took I said, a and, minute. And I, I mentioned, you know I I mentioned so, this before. The only reason that album resonated with me when it came out, I was going through a breakup at the time. Oh, yeah. That's the only reason that really, really, really resonated to me. So, yeah. So, but like, the, the, the example that I use, um, look at Kanye West Graduation. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favorite albums for, uh, from him. Uh-huh. But the one skippable song 
It is literally the worst Kanye West song. To you got to be drunk and hot drunk girls. Drunk hot girls. Okay, the yeah. song is terrible. Yeah. No, no, but no, no, I, I, just, I still but consider it's a classic. But here's though. the thing. So, like, with drunk and hot girls, right? Although you may call it a skippable song, that song. No, it, it is the no, no. But, but here's the thing, though. But, but here's the thing, though. But like that song was put on there to be a mockery and to have fun. Right. right. That song wasn't intended. So understand. it's like so so with something like that. Like I'm not gonna judge that song the same way I would judge another song because I understand what the intent of Drunk and Hot Girls was. That like we in the studio, we both probably drunk, most deaf probably blow. Let's have some fun. Let's do some silly shit. Laugh and joke. <laughs> and then, oh shit, let's keep it on the album. You know what I'm saying? I would have loved to see that recording session. Yeah, that would be so. <laughs> Who knows? It might pop up in a documentary. Who hey, knows? Man, you never know. All right, man. But, but let's, let's, so hold on. Well, let me get my criteria then, and then we're going to get to the list. Um, so with me, what I tried to do was I tried to not make it as personal. Because I have unique music taste, you know what I'm saying, um, and a lot of stuff. And we can, I maybe do that another time. But so I tried to come up with criteria and then be consistent with my criteria throughout the entire process. So my criteria was simple. It had to be albums that I have personally heard and digested. Absolutely. There are certain artists and albums, hypothetically, you know, Sugar Hill Gang, um, you know, stuff like you that. that I, but here's what I'm saying. I wasn't you there for that. I wasn't there for that. I, 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 didn't, I didn't get to enjoy that moment. Um, you know what I'm saying? There's certain music that came out that I wasn't there for the moment. I didn't, I didn't hear it till 30, 40 years later, and it's like 20, 30 years later. I'm just like, bro, it doesn't have that same impact for me. So it was kind of hard for me to properly rate what that did for everybody at that time. So I had to be something that I personally heard and digested. The quality of the music. Quality of the music speaks to that time period. There are certain sounds that are popping now that's not going to be popping in 10 years. There are certain sounds 10 years ago that's not popping now. So how did it mesh with the music of its time? Quality of the music. And then the second thing is now, did the music stand the test of time? Because there's certain that's albums important. that were dope in that era, but then you go back 10 years later and you can't really listen to it anymore. So did the music stand the test of time? Album sales. Everybody hate album sales. I include album sales because you got to look at what did the people think about the music in that time? Did they gravitate towards it? Did they not? Did they buy it? Did they not? Um, influence on the genre. So would it be an album? Did this album have any influence on the genre of music? And did people bite this style? Did people try to make music like this afterward? Did it change the sound? Whatever. So the uh, influence on the genre. And then what bar did it set? So to me, if you're a classic, you have to set a bar. Perfect example, when Jordan dunked from the free throw line, everybody tried to dunk from the free throw line after that. The bar was set. If you wasn't gliding from the free throw line, your glide didn't matter. You had to be, be at least from the free throw line or back. Once Vince stuck his arm in the rim, yo, you got to stick your arm in the rim. It's like you set the bar. Once Clef start, once uh, Steph starts shooting from 30 foot threes, you got to shoot from 30 feet or it ain't impressive. So it's like what bar did your album set? Did anything change after you dropped? So that's the criteria I use. My era is kind of the same as Clef's as far as music, although I'm a little older. I don't really too much count younger music because when I was younger, I was listening to MC Hammer, Daz FX, Vanilla Ice, Arrested Development. I was listening to everything that came on VH1. Anything that had a bop to it that I could listen to around my parents, I was rocking with. So my ear wasn't really tuned to lyricism or to production. It was just whatever's on MTV, whatever on VH1. So I'm kind of the same. I started around 94 as far as really when the lyric really hit me and I was like, yo. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to let Clev go first with his list because I'm always the big time talker. So I'm going to let Clev give his list. And his list, these lists are in order. In order. And before I let we'll let uh, Clev go, I'm going to let June say something real quick. And Because I, cause I, I don't want to fuck up his flow. If it'll work, we can do it that way. I no, just kind of want to let it, kind of want to let him flow. And, and so, so his list can make sense. And then okay. my list can okay. make sense. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to cut him off. So This ought to be good. Okay, so, oh, also, really big criteria. Uh, we did one artist per entry. Oh, yeah, right. So one I, can't, I couldn't put two Jay-Z albums. He couldn't put all Kanye albums. <laughs> it had to be only one artist could make the list. So these are some of my honorable mentions. There we go. Okay, this, uh, this is hard. This is very hard. Like, all these albums, I I. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly love and enjoy. Uh, so some of the honorable mentions that didn't make it, uh, Dr. Dre, 2001. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, Good Kid, Mad City. Mm. 
um, Jay Z Blueprint One. Mm. Uh, the one that that was really really hard for me that I tried to get this on there. Rick Ross, Rich Forever. Lo- that's a complete project for me. Uh, that that was that was the project that really made me like like Ross. Ross is is like an all around. Somebody artist. should go live. <laughs> just so I just wish somebody had a went live to hear. I Claire. did for a minute. I wish somebody I, just could have heard Claire say that Blueprint didn't make his top ten. It didn't. I, I love. I love. I, just, the, I, I love the album. I just, I I just want to hear the album. if Blueprint. I, I mean, you like you set a bar. You set a bar. I love. But I, I mean, like I to see you. what's in this top. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited to hear the list. And then, um, and then the other one that I really tried to get on there is uh, Lupe Fiasco's Food and Liquor. Mm. Love that album. This top ten better be phenomenal. Mm. Um, oh, also, Meth Man, Red Man, Blackout One is an honorable mention. I was going to, but we wrong. Set your phone. Doc Meth back in the flesh. Blood. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, blood. Yeah. Okay. Those are homegrown. Suckers break like turbo with no zone. Man, that's my shit, dog. Now, for the number 10 spot, I was debating between uh, Rich Forever and Food and Liquor. Mm-hmm. And what I eventually put over that, my number 10 is Future Dirty Sprite 2. I'm going to explain why. Look at Hank face. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like, okay. No, you got your, I'm just looking at Hank's face. Like, I feel like, so let's go. No, but let's go though. This, this is real. Ooh, ooh. Okay. I personally feel like, and one of your criteria mm-hmm. is, 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 is overall impact. Yeah. What did it do and what was the influence? Facts. I feel like Dirty Sprite 2 was number one for me, the last great trap music album. I mm. think that genre died right after that album. Mm. Also, you can make the argument that 2015 was one of the greatest runs ever for a rapper in a 12-month period. From, uh, from October of 2014 through September of 2015, mm. he dropped Monster, he dropped Beast Mode, he dropped 56 Nights, which gave us March Madness, mm-hmm. an anthem. March Madness is an anthem. Mm-hmm. Followed that up with Dirty Sprite 2, and then ended the year What a Time to Be Alive with Drake. Mm-hmm. One of the greatest runs in hip-hop history for me. Can I interject? Go ahead. It's a sad day when we have a future album in a top ten over hey, the blueprint. Muffa's gonna I'm be, sorry. People gonna be crying. Hey, people gonna be crying. Dude. But you hear, people gonna be crying. But hear yeah. me out though. Like this is why I fuck with Claire, right? Because I a thousand percent disagree. But your criteria is but, legit. But his your explanation is fits legit. It. Like, he, he 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 backs it up with his with and his. I, and, no, I, listen, and I'd be willing I, I, to be I, I, I had to be prepared. I knew I had yeah. to be prepared with it. And I'd be willing yeah. to bet it's a it's a it's a large group of people in Claire age group. Who feel that way? You know, when, when Future came out and told Jay to Jay Z, you, know, you ain't got the juice. They're like, hell yeah, you ain't got the juice, nigga. It's all about Pluto. So I mean, like the, the justification. It ain't just like no fuck that shit. He gave a real you no know, explanation as to why. So I fucks with it. Num- right? Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. J Cole, 2014 Forest Hill Drive. Mm, okay. okay. This is, and people know I am very normally very critical of J Cole. Okay. Mm-hmm. By far his greatest album. I think it's not even close. And th- this was in an era to where there weren't really any complete playthrough albums. The fact he had no features, he had no promotion, what, no singles. What year did that come out? 2014. Okay. 2014. No singles, no promotion, no features. And it it, it 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 just it showcased his growth going from the warm up and then his first previous two albums going into this third one. It it showed that this it stamped him. It stamped him as a uh, a new pioneer in hip hop. Kendrick all was already proclaimed that out the gate. It took Cole a little bit of time. 
Like if you go through Friday Night Lights and Born Center, like Born Center, he that's when he kind of start making that transition. But in Forest Hill Drive, he went all the way with it, and it, it paid off. That is phenomenal album. I can't believe that album is eight years old. Yeah, classic album, classic album. This is solid. This is a dope album. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Cameron Purple Haze. Oh, God. This album is a moment in time for me. I, w- I was personally a huge Dipset fan. And uh, as me and June was talking on the way here, I feel like 2004 was the greatest year in hip-hop history for me. The amount of music, uh, the amount of sheer quality music. So I have a few albums from, from this era at, at, at this now you said two thousand four. I said during that time, so it could have been two thousand three. That 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 was a good good yes. time for music and I, I hip hop. Purple Haze put put the, the the cherry on top as, as Dipset pretty much running rap at that time. Um, the produ- the production from Kanye didn't hurt. Of course, the production from Kanye didn't hurt. Uh, I I felt like. It, it 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 fully showed Cameron his personality, where he just said, fuck it. This is me. The computers are putin. I'm wearing pink. Like, the the the, the swag and, and, and the bravado on at that era was just unfucking matched You're not going to credit Kanye with that, though. No. <laughs> no. Wearing the pink. And the, no. <laughs> Love the album, though. Amazing album. Uh, number seven. This is where it's, it started to get really hard for me. Number seven is Lil Wayne Carter Two. Okay. This is more personal because um, a lot of people would say Carter Three is his best album, but for me, for me, I love I love the rapper when he's still hungry. Carter Three came out. He already made it. Lollipop came out. He was already he was already a made man. Uh-huh. Carter too. He was still hungry. Money on my mind. Like he was. He wasn't there yet. He was still hungry. And like I said, that that's one of the three albums that I credit uh, for me wanting to rap. That was a. That was I. I got the the, the burnt CD. Like I kept that shit in <laughs> rotation. Uh, Good old LimeWire. <laughs> Which Wayne album was that? That's Carter too. So that that's uh, Money on My Mind, Hustlers Music. That was that one. Yeah, that trash. I mean, that good music. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. That shit hard. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to get a reaction, man. <laughs> so look. So hold on. Let's do this real quick, then. Okay. No, we're gonna do this. So how about we we kind of blend in a little bit what I said of what I said what I recommended a little bit of Hank. So you give your bottom five, I give about my bottom five, and then we go back and forth on our top five. That'll okay. work. Okay. That way we blend in a little bit of both. So I still got to do my so number six. You still got yeah, you got yeah. one more. To okay. do one. So you got Future Dirty Sprite two at ten. J Cole two thousand fourteen Forest Hill drives at nine. Purple Haze at eight. And then uh, Wayne Carter, Carter two, two at seven. seven. And then, and then number, six. number six is Drake. Take care. Mm. Two thousand eleven. Um, to me, his best album. His best overall album. This is a, another debate. A lot of people say that Nothing the Same is by far his best album. I mean, that's probably his best album rapping-wise, but just overall musically, and we, we want to talk about impact. Take Care introduced us to The Weeknd. He is, he is easily one of the top three biggest pop artists in the world right now. Okay, can we do this, though? Yes. For those out there that don't, may not know, I want you to name a couple of songs from each each uh each album that okay. you yeah. just just a, just a couple of things that you know. So you want him to go back? No, he don't have to. Oh. Just going forward. Look at him going forward. Let me pull this up real. Quick. Because some people may not recognize what it, album it is. So if you say a couple of the the songs that's on there, that get them. Okay, so take care. That had shot for me. Crew love headlines. That had Marvin's room, which is arguably his, his biggest song. So let me ask you this. So, and I, I was trying my hardest not to interrupt your list, and yeah. I don't want to interrupt when you're doing your list because it's personal to you. Um, do you feel that for it to be one of the greatest albums all, of all time, 
that the or one of the greatest albums, not all time, one of the greatest albums that you consider. Do you feel like that album has to have some of the greatest songs of all time? No. Okay. No. Because it, as long as it's cohesive, okay. it don't have to be, but it, it has to be cohesive. So is it, so from your perspective, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, is this like an averaging grade type thing where if it has a bunch of eight and a half out of 10 or a bunch of nine out of 10, that makes the grade for the album a 9.2 or a 9.3, but not one song on there is a 10 per se. Right. Like that type of deal. Okay. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Because it is, if you look at the album, it's not really one song that's like, if, if, if people were ranking like a, the top five Drake albums of all time, mm-hmm. maybe one of these would, would get mm-hmm. mentioned. And if it did, it's probably low. But when you put these in a collection, in the order that it's put in, it it, it just put it just puts you on a roller coaster. It, it, it has some amazing features. Okay. One of the best Rick Ross features. Facts. Andre three thousand killed it on the real her. Like, I I I love this album. I like, I like your list. Um, other, I'm not really as big on Future, and it's like for me, like if I'm in a club and a Future song come on, it's going down. Right, but I've never really been the type to just like ride around and listen to Future. Oh yeah, yeah I work yeah. out to March Madness though. Oh man, that shit that's an going. anthem. Um, that's that a shit fucking going. anthem. Uh, now let me get to the old head list. Do we got an old head sound? <laughs> no, we got an old head sound. All right, so let me start off with my honorable mention since Clay released in 1989. Coming in at number <laughs> no. So my first honorable mention to me is the album that started me to rap, uh, which is a uh, um, murder music by Mob Deep. That is when I really first start, when I first heard Quiet Storm. And he said, I put my mm. lifetime in between the paper's lines. I'm the Quiet Storm nigga who fight rhymes. Like, it didn't really, I'm like, he just rhymed the same word with the same word, but it sound dope. And then he was the first nigga I heard when he said, I spent too many nights sniffing coke, getting right, wasting my life. Now I'm trying to make things right. Like, the first rap, I really heard admitting to that type of shit. So, now, also, that really hit me. Also, yeah. I'm, I'm going to need some recommendations from you from some of these mm-hmm. albums because yeah. I can tell, right, a lot of these I've probably never heard. Yeah, so Mob Deep, <laughs> Qu- Mob Deep Murder Music, um, song Quiet Storm, that's probably still my favorite hip-hop beat. I do know that. Just for me. I do like the remix. I do like the remix with with Kim. Kim, yeah. Kim, Kim, Kim slid. Original on that. and I do. I do know the. Yeah. Um. Second one was my next honorable mention is the song the album that kind of got me into the um, backpack rap, which is the Roots. Things mm-hmm. fall apart. That had the joint with Erica Badu. Love that it, song. Okay. Yeah. Love so, that song. So that for me, um, that was one of my favorite. Um, Dre Chronic, a uh, Snoop Doggy style. Oh. Uh, Eminem Slim Shady LP Wu Tang for Eric. So, so, so these my honorable mention. Okay, um, so you would take the Slim Shady LP over the Marshall Mathers LP because I, I like the Marshall Mathers LP better. Yeah, because to me, uh, Slim Shady LP has my favorite M- Eminem song of all time, which is Rock Bottom. Okay, like that's when when M a lot of the stuff that made the Slim Shady LP was a lot of his earlier work. Right. So we had, like you said, you like that hunger. It was right. a lot of yeah, that hunger yes, yes. on Slim Shady Rock Bottom when he said, "I feel like I'm walking a tightrope without a circus net. I'm popping Percocet because I'm a nervous wreck." I deserve respect, but I work a sweat for this worthless check. I'm about to burst this tech for somebody to reverse this debt. Like, when you're talking like that, it was like, oh, shit. This is the we, ain't, time. we ain't dissing Britney Spears in them. This is the we're second talking. time he rapped this verse in his podcast. You know, he, he loves that fucking man, song. Good, good, that, that's my favorite <laughs> M song of all time. Favorite. And I got a bunch of artists who, when that song, when, when it, certain song, when it hit, it's like, yeah, that's it. You know what I'm saying? And that was I, it I like his Fuck honorable mentions, so I, I'm um, very interested for this list. Wu-Tang Forever. Of course, they had Triumph on it. Uh, that's my joint. Eric B and Rakim paid in full. Um, Public Enemy, It Takes a Nation. And there, there it goes. Straight out of Compton. There it comes. <laughs> Those are my honorable mentions. Okay. Um, because I feel like one thing that your era, and my era did it too. Now that we're getting older, we kind of going back and writing right. revisionist history. But you don't pay respect to people who came before you and people who laid the blueprint for you to be able to do what you do. And, I and, agree. and a lot of those blueprints was laid. So it's like, although I missed the era, I'm not going to neglect it. You know what okay. I'm um, so my number ten on my list is Common B. Um, I love this that had album. Gold that had Testify that had um, I um, Faithful um, that had uh, what what was it mother that had the corner on that there the corner the people the food Shaw City That's like that to me was showing that a backpack rapper could make good music 
It didn't always have to be lyrical miracle for you to be backpack. You can make songs. You can be appealing. You can get the women on board. You can rap over dope and I, beats. I think, I think and you that, can sell. I think that might be one of, if not the best, Kanye produced project. Uh, overall, yeah, I agree. Overall. I knew you'd like that for Of me. course, of course. So it's number great, 10 for a, me that's, is... That's a, it's a great album. It's common. That's a great album. Um, my number nine is The Score by Fuji's. Um, The Score had Ready or Not, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fuji Lie, Love Fuji Killing Lie. Me Softly, Love it. No Woman, No Cry. Like, it changed music. Love it. It changed the style of music. It created the whole We Need a Female on the Track. Go ahead. 94, 95, right? Uh, I think it was 96. 96. 96. 96. Came out in 96. Okay. Um, I remember first hearing Fuji Lie, and I'm like, yo, what is this? You know what I'm saying? Hearing uh, Their first album was 94, 95. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, yeah. Um, score did it for me. It fit, mm-hmm. it checks every criteria. It shifted the culture and how music was made. It made Wyclef a star. It made Prize a star. It brought that reggae sound to hip hop, even though they were Haitian. Um, it brought that right. I'm like, how that work? You know, Lauren, because people started wanting that. Nobody knew who Wyclef was, so they was trying to. Right. They wanted yeah, that side of yeah, You know, yeah. then right after that, here come Barrington, Levy, and Shine. You know, whoa, man! Like everybody wanting that sound, so it shifted the culture. It so it was dope music. It was timeless, and it created stars. And every single charted at number one, like crazy. Um, my number eight is Damn Kendrick Lamar. Um, it's probably mm. the most newest album that I got on my list. I respect it. <laughs> um, for me, I've always been a fan of Kendrick the moment I heard him. But damn, just kind of gave me the justification for it. Like You know what I'm saying? It was like, I like what he was doing. But damn, with DNA, with loyalty, <laughs> with humble, with love, like with Duckworth, which you told that story backwards to beginning Man. on how the whole thing came about. Quality album, quality production, quality features, shifted the culture. It sold like it was crazy. And that came out in 2017 because you said I don't have nothing on my list after 1990. Hey! So we got Kendrick down there. Uh, number seven uh, for me is probably my favorite album on the list, um, which is a Rick Ross Teflon Dime. Um, That's an amazing album. <laughs> Teflon Don to me is, it showed me that trap rappers can rap and put dope music together. Tears of Joy is probably my favorite Rick Ross song of all time. Freemason. With, How, did uh, you see, he did, I'm sorry. It, oh, no, you good. He you good. did a... He did a Tiny Desk concert, uh-huh. and he performed that live with an orc. Beautiful. Man, that Beautiful. song is crazy. Beautiful. Um, so you got going in order. You got Freemason. You got Tears of Joy. You got Maybach Music 3, Live Fast, Die Young, Super High, Number One with Trey Songz and Diddy, Diddy, MC Hammer with Gucci, BMF, Blowing Money Fast with Style Now Speed. stop right oh, no, there. No, I'm not stopping. Stop. No, 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 no. Hold on, let me finish. Music. Ashton Martin Music with Drake and Chrisette, All the Money in the World. This is the album. In order. That's not me picking the fa- my favorite songs. That's the album in order. And BMF was an anthem. Is. Is. Still is. Still is. Is. And I am making a playlist as we speak. Bruh, like an Teflon Don anthem. is to me a perfect album. I feel that way about it's, I feel that way about Rich Forever. Even though it's technically not an album, yeah. but it should have been yeah. because of sampling. So it's like when I when, when I listen when I once again when I check my boxes, uh, shout out to Royce the Five Nine. Are you checking boxes? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I personally heard it. Quality of music stood the test of time. It's so influence on the genre like Maybach music. Like everybody looks for it once out Ross album drop. What's the Maybach music on there? Who gonna be on that? Yeah. Like Ross does it. You know what I'm saying? So I ain't gonna lie, I love his list so hard. <laughs> and then my number six. Is a Kanye West college dropout. Um, to okay. me, college dropout was although it had way too many skits. Um, way too, yeah, way. But too when many. I look at college, I don't think anything after college dropout has changed the game the way college dropout did. From bringing back the resurgence of the soul sound with the sped up samples, um, the cohesiveness of the album. Songs. Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Oh, we we having a technical conversation behind the scene. <laughs> um, the quality of the songs, the singles hit, and then the fact that it was so slept on and nobody expected. It. He didn't come out as the guy. Right. So it wasn't like this big push was put together and all this money was invested in it and he's supposed to be the guy. No, he did this on his own and brought it to them and then said, check me out. So the fact that you, you created something that shifted the culture on your own, like that's where it's at for me. So college dropout is right there. Okay, so that's, that's, a, my, that's my bottom five. That's our bottom five. So we got, we're going to cut this episode right here. Um, we are going to come back on the next episode and give us our top five of this. But make sure... You guys subscribe, subscribe to Hank Nation TV. Shout out to Dope Ideas Media. Yes, sir. Shout out to Hank Nation. Um, yes, sir. Oh, make sure y'all also check out the beautiful ladies over at the Honey Bee Pod. Check them out. Shout out check to Ari B. Shout out to Honey Foreign. Dope, dope, dope content from Plug them. City. Plug City. Like I said, make y'all y'all subscribe. Make sure y'all subscribe to ASG Radio. Some great dope shit coming there. Uh, we will see y'all in the next episode episode to where we will be breaking down our top five and watch my five smoke heads on oh, god <laughs>